Hey what's up guys, back again with another video in the C++ series. This episode I'll be teaching you about functions, and functions are very important, it's a big part of the C++ and other programming languages. They allow you to reuse code very easily, and then uh, group your code into sections and do a bunch of cool little stuff that's going to take your code to the next level. So it's very good that we're um, in this part of this series now, so you're on your way to becoming even more advanced, right? So anyway, let's get started here. So I'm going to just, you know, do a thing right here. So functions, and I explain functions by saying it's an easy way to group and repeat code. So it's called an abstraction because it abstracts your code and it makes it easier to read. It makes it shorter. You don't have to repeat code over and over because let me just show you an example program here, okay? So this is an example of why you might want to use a function. So let's just make a simple program that is able to add numbers, okay? So we're going to use some variables here. So int num1, int num2, and then int result is equal to num1 plus num2, right? And so let's give these some initial values. So we could do like 6, and then we could do 7. We could have just asked for the numbers, by the way, with the cn statement, but I'm too lazy right now. So this is just a simple example, and then we can go ahead and output this if you want to. So num1... Uh, or no, results, we're just going to put the results of the operation. Alright, pretty simple. So if we run this, we should get um, 13, right? Very simple. 7 plus 6 is 13. There we go, we get 13, right? So let's say for some reason we want to repeat this, right? We want to add some more numbers. So we would have to copy and paste this um, however many times we want to repeat it, right? Uh, like that. Okay. And so we can keep doing that as long as we need to. Uh, we don't need to, you know, redeclare these, by the way. We could just, you know, reset them, reinitialize them. And so, yeah, we're just adding multiple things. And I could change the numbers if I want to, but that's okay. So, yeah, you get the point. So, what we're doing here is doing a bunch of the same thing over and over and over, right? And in a bigger program, you can maybe imagine why that might be a problem. Let's say in a bigger program, you have like 100 lines of code just for one thing like this. And then let's say you want to do that thing 100 times. So, 100 lines of code times 100, that's a lot of code you have to write, right? So, it's a little stupid to be repeating that 100 lines of code over and over and over. So, what we can do is group this into what's called a function. So, all we got to do is call one line of code to to repeat it okay so as long as we declare the line of code or the group of code that we want to repeat into a function we can just call the name of the function and then we don't have to do this whole code all over again basically okay so hopefully that makes sense but I'll be showing you how to do that right now so it's just a simple way to for you to group code and then repeat code okay so um, to make a function first you need what's called the function prototype which is you declaring the function telling the compiler and the programmer or whatever you know what the name of the function is and all that fun stuff so first when you declare a function what you need is a return type which is going to be the value that you return so just for example sake we're going to do integer and you'll see what that means in a second what I mean by return type so integer and then now we can name our function our function can be called anything as long as it's not a you know reserved keyword like int main return, you know, any of the things that are reserved for C++, as long as it's not that, then we can name it whatever, okay? So I'm going to call this add numbers, because we're going to be adding two numbers, and then after that you put two parentheses, and then there you go, and then a semicolon after the parentheses, okay? And that's all we need to declare a prototype for a function, but usually you want to have some parameters for your function, and you can use these parameters to uh, do some things, okay? You can ask for some values, basically. So int num1. And then our second parameter is going to be int num2, okay? So you'll see in a second what I do with these numbers. But what we're going to do with these numbers is to basically ask for two numbers, and then we're going to add them together, right? Because it's integer add numbers. So again, these are called parameters, and each parameter is going to be separated by a comma here. They're also called arguments, but I like to call them parameters. But yeah, we're declaring a prototype for a function, so we know what the function is going to look like. But now we can actually set the code for our function down here. So we can do now int add number. So we're basically just repeating what we already wrote. And then we're just going to do this again, num1, int num2. And then now, instead of putting a semicolon right here, we open this up with a block of code. And now whatever code is inside of here will be the code for our function. Okay? So we're going to be adding two numbers. So all we got to do is do int result is equal to num1 plus num2. So the way this will work is the two numbers that are provided as parameters in our function will be added together and then declared for this variable that we just created here. So now what we can do is return that result, which is basically going to send the result back to whatever, wherever the function was declared. And we'll see an example of how that works in a second. But this all comes full circle now. But like I said in the beginning, integer is the type that you're returning. And right here, we're returning an integer, right? Result is an integer. So if we were going to do something else like double, 
this wouldn't work because we have to return an integer. It cannot be a different return type. It has to match the return type. So yeah, just keep that in mind, okay? So we'll get plenty of practice with this, don't worry. I'll be showing you some more examples in a second. So now if you run this, let's see what happens. So nothing actually happens because we haven't called the function. So if you want to call the function or, you know, call the code like we would write it out normally, all we got to do is do add numbers just like that. And then now it's going to add the numbers for us. Very simple. And so what we need to do is put a parentheses here and then a little thing pops up here and it shows us that we need to have two variables, int num1 and then integer num2. So we know they have to be integers. They cannot be any other data type. That's the only data types at once. So we need to provide two data types, which are or two integers, excuse me, that are going to be the numbers that we want to add, right? So let's do two and then comma five, okay? And then we can put a semicolon on the end. And let's see what happens if you run this. And nothing's going to happen because we're um, not outputting the value. So what this means basically, let me show you. So what happens here is that we're calling the add numbers function, which is then going to take two numbers and we're providing these two numbers in the parameters, okay? And then we're going to take these two parameters and then add them and then set the result of that addition to the result integer here that we just created. And then finally, what we're going to do is return the results. And what that is going to do in the most simple terms possible is set the value of this equal to 2 plus 5, basically, okay? So whatever you're returning is now going to be the actual value of the function once it's done running, okay? So let me show you how that works. So we can output the value, so C out add numbers 2 and 5 and if we output this it's going to output into the console 7 because the value of this like I said is going to be equal to the return value so for example if we were going to return you know the, the number 9 for example this would be 9 no matter what because it doesn't matter what this is anymore we're not returning the result we're returning 9 so yeah just pause the video if you don't understand what I'm saying right now but you'll get plenty of more practice anyway so we can get rid of this now we don't need this line of code so now let's run this and we should get 7 into the console there we go, or 9, we get 9 because I forgot to change this back here. There we go. So let's restart this and see what we get. Alright, so now we get 7, which is perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to get. And if we go over this one more time, what we're doing here is declaring the function prototype, which is basically going to be the um, template for our function, what the name is, what the return type is. You know, the first thing here, that's the return type. And then we have some parameters. And keep in mind, we don't actually have to have parameters every time we make a function. You can leave it without parameters if you want to. But functions are commonly used with parameters so that we can do stuff with those values. So yeah. So then after that, we go ahead and define our function. After we you know do the prototype, we define it, which is basically just going to be adding the code for our function. And then finally, if we want to, we can return a value. In this case, we have to return a value because we set it to integer but then we return the value of the results of the addition that we just did with these two numbers, okay? So hopefully that all makes sense, but let's do some more examples here. So let's say that you want to not return a value. That's something you might come across sometimes. And what you would do then, instead of doing integer, for example, that's the return value, you could also do void, which means that you're not gonna return a value with this function that you're doing. So now let's make a new function prototype here. So we're gonna do void say something and then we're going to have a variable um, a parameter here, excuse me, we're going to have a parameter here. So it's going to be a string, so string message is going to be our parameter. So whenever we call upon this function, we have to pass in a string with the function as we call it, and then we're going to do something with that hopefully. So let's go down here and tell the program what it's going to do. So we're going to define this function that we just created, okay? So we just do void say something st string message and then now we open this up with a block of code and then inside of here we can do whatever we want like we did last time so now let's output something right let's just output sing, output something to the console and uh, keep in mind you can do anything you want to you can have any piece of code within a function anything that you would normally have within this main function here you could also have within these functions that you're creating so yeah so anyway we can declare this message out here if you want to so this is a very simple function as well because all we're doing is accepting a single message and then we're going to take that message and then output it to the console whenever we call this function, okay? And as you can see, I did not add a return statement because we don't need to return anything, right? We're returning void, which means nothing, right? So we have nothing to return, so we can just leave it without a return statement. But you can see that some developers sometimes leave return by itself like that. It's the same thing. You don't have to have that, though, if you don't want to, okay? So anyway, that's what that's going to do. So we can call this now if you want to. So we could, well, let's just get rid of this, by the way. But anyway, we can call this function now by doing say numbers, right? So our say something, excuse me, because that's what we call the function. So say something, and then now we do uh, our parentheses here, and it says we need a string message. So let's add a message here. So double quotes, and we're going to say uh, root beer 
is really good. Yummy. All right, so that's going to run. And so hopefully if this worked correctly, it should take this message and then pass it to here and I'll put the message to the console, okay? So let's run this now and see what happens. So now it says root beer is really good, yummy. And that's exactly what we wanted to do, right? So that's just an example of how you use a void return type because we want to return nothing this time. We don't have to return something when we create a function. It's just an option for us, okay? So those are two examples of how to make a function, but let me show you another example. Um, another example would be defining the function and declaring the prototype all in one go. So we don't have to do a prototype and then define it at the bottom, okay? We can just do it all at one time. That's what I'm used to doing with Java because in Java you don't have prototypes, you just do it all at the same time. So the way you would do it is basically you just do what's down here for whenever you make a function, but do it up here instead and without a prototype. But keep in mind that it has to be before the main uh, f uh, main function here because it has to be before the call of the function. So for example if I make a function up here like I'm about to do it's gonna work because it's before I called the function right but if it was down here it's not gonna work unless I have a prototype right so hopefully that makes sense but now let's go ahead and make our function here so let's make a function that is able to subtract numbers since we have one that adds numbers let's make one that subtracts numbers so we can simply do that by doing integer or we can do a different one if we want to we could do double and then we could say uh, subtract subtract number and then integer num1 and then integer num2 I'm just calling it that because I want to but you can call it whatever you want anything you want to call it it's just a simple temporary variable that's basically what a parameter is so we can open this up here and then now we can do the same thing we did before kind of so before I just did integer result is equal to num1 minus num2 and then I returned the results and I could do that if I want to that's a very um, easy way to do that uh, calculation but what I want to do just to keep it even more simple is I could actually just do this. So num1 minus num2. I could dim I could really easily just do that within the return statement. So we can uh, return the value of this operation that we did here. C++ is very smart as you can see. So anyway, this is our function. That's all we got for our function. It's a very simple function that is able to subtract numbers. And like I said, we don't need a prototype. We're just defining it up here. And as long as it's before our, you know, the call to the function, it's going to work like that, okay? So we can go ahead and call this function now So that since we're done with this. So we can do subtract numbers, and then we can call the numbers that we want to subtract, or pass in the numbers as parameters, the numbers that we want to subtract. So we can do uh, 8 and then 3. So the result of that operation should be 5. So now let's run this and see what we get. So we don't actually get anything except for the last function that we just called a second ago. And that's because, by the way, if you notice, we didn't actually have to do a C out when we called this function this time. And that's because inside of the function, we're actually outputting a message and we're not returning anything. So we'd have nothing to return outside of here because it's already outputting, okay? So it's outputting on its own, so we don't need to output it outside of the function, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. But this one we have to because we're actually returning something. We're not outputting anything. If you want to, we could have, um, you know, returned this value, but um, we're not going to do that. So we could simply do C out uh, subtract number like we did last time, and then let's add the inline here. So now that should output 5 because 8 minus 3 is 5, so let's see if that works. And there we go, so we get 5, it works perfectly. That's how that works, very simple. That's how you declare a function without having to make a, pro a prototype, okay? So one more thing of the functions I want to show you is how to declare a parameter with a default value. That's actually something I don't think you have within Java, which is another language I work with a lot, as you might know. So this is very cool. Um, we can go ahead and make a function prototype here if you want to. So we can do string, and we'll do we'll make it uh, called make name message. That's what I'm gonna call my function here. And so now it's gonna take a parameter here. So string name, okay. So that's our prototype. So we can go down here and then define that function that we just created. So we can do string make name message. String name. And then we can open that up. So the code for this function will be string message is equal to hello, my name is, and then plus the name that they provided as a parameter. So it's basically just going to take the name they provided and then set it into a, a sentence here, okay? And then now what we want to do is return that sentence that we just created because we have to return string here. That's our return type, right? So that's pretty cool. And then um, let's go ahead and run this to test it out. Let's get rid of these two lines of code. And then uh, we'll, we'll do C out. Um, make name message and let's, pri let's provide a name here so we can call it let's call it Jerry something like that so if it worked correctly it should output this little sentence here into the console okay so let's run this see what we get and then 
and it works perfectly. It says, hello, my name is Jerry, okay? So let me show you how to use the default parameter. So what we can do here is do string name is equal to Bob. And what this will do is basically, if they do not provide a parameter, whenever they declare the or use the function, it's going to automatically assume they want to use this one, okay? So it's a default value. If they don't provide one, it's going to assume they want to use the default value. So I just got rid of the parameter, so let's see if it works. It should fit Bob into there. So... Yeah, so it says, hello, my name is Bob, and that's because we did not provide a name. So if I was to provide a new name now, like Cherry, for example, um, it was, should say Cherry instead of Bob, because now it's not defaulting. It's using the one we provided. And there we go. It says, hello, my name is Cherry. And that's how you do that. That's a very simple way to use a default parameter within functions, okay? So I showed you a lot of different things with functions today. I know that was really quick and maybe a little confusing, because it's um, if you haven't worked with functions before, that's a very... Uh, big thing to learn but but don't overwhelm yourself it's very simple um, it's uh, pretty much all I showed you except that we'll be getting lots of more practice in the future don't worry with functions so yeah and then also after in this episode I want you to practice on your own you know make some cool little programs with functions and do some stuff like that so just play around with it get some practice down because it's really simple and uh, yeah so just don't worry and um, so keep in mind by the way that whenever you declare a function the return type can be any return type it can be an object we'll learn that in the future it can be pretty much anything, you'll see that. And then uh, same with the parameters, it can be any data type, okay? And then also your functions are going to be way bigger than these, you know, single lines of code that we have here. Just for example sake, since it's the first time we worked with functions, they're very short. So yeah, in the future you'll see much bigger lines of code, which is usually why you want to use a function, because you want to have a lot of code simplified in case you want to repeat that code, okay? So anyway, I know that was a lot that I showed you today, so ask any questions you want in the comment section below. But actually, I'd rather you join our Discord server. We have about 300 people in there who would be uh, glad to help you or talk to you, whatever you want to do if you need a friend, if you're lonely. Um, so yeah, join our Discord server. There's a link in the description for you, so ask for help there if you need to, anything you want to do. And then all of the code from today's episode is going to be in the description below, so make sure you check it out and then bookmark it for future use in case you forget how to make functions and all that fun stuff. So that's it. If you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe, and peace.